Layouts are containers that allow designers to arrange elements in either rows or columns. Let me show you how. If I highlight these three layers and tap Shift L, we have wrapped the elements in a column. But if we look a little bit closer, you'll see something else. What actually happened when we tapped Shift L was we first wrapped each of our layers in their own respective layout. It is these layouts that enable Rive to calculate the position and size of each of our elements. Rive concluded that these layouts were more vertically aligned than horizontally, so automatically wrapped them all in a column instead of a row. But why do our elements need to be wrapped in their own layouts? Other design programs have layouts systems, and their layers don't need to be wrapped in their own individual layouts. Well, Rive is not just a design tool, it is also an animation program. If I wanted to animate this text or this shape layer, the fact that it is wrapped in its own layout means that the animation isn't going to affect its own layout's position and it's also not going to affect the position of its sibling layouts. It's a little bit extra setup, but it gives designers so much more flexibility to use freeform graphics like characters in your designs. Now, you may also be wondering what happens if I put a layer into this layout without wrapping it first. Well, here I have a text layer. I'm going to drag it into my column without wrapping it in a layout. As you can see, it has automatically been pushed to the top left of our column layout box. This is because its position was changed to zero and zero. However, we can freely move it around the layout box and it won't affect any of the other layers because the other layers are layouts. So yes, it is possible to use a layer that is not wrapped in a layout inside a column or row. However, it will not be included in the column or row as one of the children. The column settings, which we are about to discuss, will not affect this layer. Let me just delete that. Let's go through this column's settings. At the top, it is hugging the width and hugging the height of its child layouts. This means that if I was to change this text run to something much longer, because the column is hugging the width of all of its children, its width dynamically increases. But let's change this text back to hello and go through some more settings. We currently have absolute positioning switched on, so we have a set pixel amount for the left side and a set pixel amount for the top. It is here that we control the alignment of the column's child layouts. Down here is where we control the vertical gap between the child layouts. And if we were a row, it's here that we control the horizontal gap between the child layouts. I'm going to switch this back to a column. Down here, we can set padding, which is space around the child layouts. And here is a corner radius that is only visible once you have a background. So I'm going to set the background to black, and then I will increase the corner radius and you'll see up here that the corners get round. It should be noted that a column or row is only automatically created when you highlight multiple elements and tap Shift L. So for instance, I can create a single rectangle and tap Shift L, and all we get is a shape layout. In order to get a row or column, I have to tap Shift L again, and that wraps it in a row. Within this row, I can duplicate my shape layout, and once again, it is from here, the parent layout, that we control the children. We control how it fits around the children. We control whether or not the children are in a row or a column. We control the gap between the children. We control the padding around the children. It is the parent's behavior that affects the children.